Hi everyone, my name is Chelsea. Welcome to Little Mountain Ranch and welcome to my kitchen. Today we are going to be preserving all of the food that we harvested in the last video that I posted the other day and I will link that video up here and I will also put it down in the description box below if you want to check that out. Today is actually the same day because one of the best things that you can do to preserve the freshness and all the vitamins and minerals and all of that good stuff in your fresh produce from your garden is to preserve it the day that you pick it. If that is not possible, then make sure that you store it in the refrigerator. Oftentimes for most things, it needs to be in the crisper with pretty high humidity in order to keep the freshness as optimum as possible until you're able to preserve all of that awesome produce. Today we are going to be preserving all kinds of stuff. We're going to start over here with all of this beautiful parsley. Isn't that just gorgeous? Because of how late we are in the season, we have actually cut the parsley right down to the ground. We are going to be dehydrating all of this parsley. You can also chop it and freeze it as well if you don't have a dehydrator. We have an Excalibur dehydrator. I actually have two of them. I have the older nine drawer um, dial style one. And I also have the newer digital one, which I'll show you in a few minutes. Um, and that is the one that I have up in my kitchen that I do most of my dehydrating for my herbs over the summertime. One of the other options you have for dehydrating herbs like this is you can use your oven on its lowest setting. Just keep in mind that even the lowest setting on most most ovens, which is around 175 degrees Fahrenheit, will be pretty hot. So the amount of drying time is going to be shrunk down a ton compared to using something like a dehydrator. So make sure that you keep a very close eye on those, just be checking them very, very often and pull them out as soon as they're dried. You can also dehydrate herbs outdoors. Just make sure that you keep them out of direct sunlight because the UV rays will impact the color of your herbs. That is number one. Number two is we are going to deal with this mountain plus the five more zucchini I have on the kitchen table. We're going to deal with this and I have quite a few tips of different ways to be able to preserve this. We also have this big box of yellow beans, all of these tomatoes and and cucumbers, a big box of pickling cucumbers, which where did I put those? Those are actually still outside on the deck. And I also have some really gorgeous purple beans and lots of fruit flies in my kitchen. I'm sorry about that. If you see little flies buzzing around, it's fruit fly season here and I do everything that I can possibly do to keep them at bay. And yet, especially because right now I have so many fruits and vegetables coming through my kitchen constantly, it's just about impossible to get them rid of them completely. The other thing I have is some red peppers that I have to chop up for the freezer. And these are peppers that I bought at a local farm. They aren't the ones out of my high tunnel. I won't be harvesting those probably for another couple of weeks. And I think that was it. I'm not sure how far we'll get today, but I really do want to try to get at least all of what's on the counter here uh, put up for the winter. All right, now how am I gonna set up these stations here? I think I will get some help from the kids to get the ends snapped off of these. I'll show you what we're gonna do and how we're going to process these. Honey, could you get the table cleared off? And we'll just set up some cutting boards and some knives. I've decided to just take my slicing cucumbers and put them in the fridge and we will eat these with supper tonight, all sliced up. You love these, don't you? They're yummy. Okay, I have spread out all of the beans along here. Look at this gorgeous color. These really are just so beautiful. Peppers over here. And then we are going to cut off both ends. Then we're gonna cut them up like this and blanch and freeze them. And I'll show you how we do that in just a second. Okay, I'm gonna set a stopwatch and see how long it takes to get all of these. I don't think it's gonna take very long. Maybe like half an hour? What do you think? An hour. <laughs> you think an hour? <laughs> Next up, I am going to deal with all of these tomatoes. I'm going to get them washed and then I will blanch them on the stove. Jack, could you run down and grab me a couple of large pots from downstairs, please? A couple of large pots. I'm going to get these tomatoes all washed and put right into my stock pot and I'm going to cook them down skins and all. I'm planning on pureeing them with an immersion blender before I turn them into any kind of sauce or anything. So I think that's as far as I'll get with the tomatoes for today. When you are growing zucchini, 
The largest you really want them to grow is about this size, but they do grow incredibly fast. It does seem like overnight sometimes. So make sure that you're going out regularly to pick your zucchini, or if you're buying them, make sure that they're this size or smaller. And the reason for that, I'll show you right here, is because this is what the inside looks like. All of this whole entire area here, I'm actually going to remove because this is mostly seeds and fibrous material that is mostly comprised of water and just ends up cooking down to nothing. So you're better off, bring you in a little bit closer here. It's been a while since I filmed in the kitchen. I'm gonna have to get back into the swing of it. All right, there we go. Take your spoon and remove the inside. See what I mean? Mostly just seed and water. And this is what we have left once the seeds have been removed. So we're going to go through all of our zucchini and do that before we get into any more food preserving. So we are going to do this with the inside of all of our zucchini. And all of, this, all of this waste is just going to go out to our pigs and our chickens, so it's not actually going to be wasted. So I'll show you the difference between this and this smaller zucchini here. This one is not a very good example because it's pretty much all seed in there as well. That's funny. I don't actually have any ones that are optimal size, but normally if they are smaller like this one, they shouldn't really have that many seeds inside. Okay, let's get some organization happening on this counter here. Now we have a mountain of chopped and cord, sort of cord, <laughs> cord zucchini. And a big bucket of stuff that's gonna go out to the chick chickens. I'll think of this one, I'll go to the chickens. And the bigger ones, which these ones I've decided not to use because they are just really tough and not great zucchini. So these ones will go out to the pigs. So we'll pop those on there. And now I will show you what I'm going to do with all of this zucchini. There are so many things that you could do with zucchini. You could stuff these full of meat and rice and cheese and bake them in the oven. You could cut them into really thin strips and use them like pasta in lasagna or even just like pasta with sauce on top. But what I'm going to be doing with these today is preserving them for the winter. And how I'm going to do that is run these, most of these through the food processor and grate them all up and freeze them in Ziploc bags. The nice things, a thing about freezing these compared to other veggies is that you you don't have to blanch them. Blanching is when you boil for three minutes and then you dunk in an ice water. That impacts the way the enzymes react to freezing and just makes the food store better and taste better. That is not necessary with zucchini, thank goodness, because this would be a lot of blanching. The other thing that I love to do with zucchini is to make zucchini relish. It is my absolute favorite relish and I will link a recipe that I use down in the description box below because I've already made all of my zucchini relish for this year and I'll show you that when I do my pantry tour towards the end of October once everything is all put up in there. That's one of my favorite videos to do every year and I'm looking forward to sharing that with you this year. So now I'm going to go get my food processor. Oh, I should say one of the other things that you can do with these is you can chop them up into small bits, fry them up with some butter and garlic and herbs and freeze those in Ziploc bags or in little containers. And then you can add those to all sorts of recipes throughout the winter as well. But for right now, I am just going to grate this up. We use this in all kinds of stuff. We use it in baking, breads, muffins. I love putting it in pasta sauce. It adds a really nice flavor and texture and is a great way to hide some extra nutrients in your pasta sauce for your kids. All right, so all I do is I cut these up, obviously, so they're gonna fit through here and let it go for it. I will spare you the sound of it because this is a very loud food processor. So we'll get all these processed up and then I'll show you the next step. Okay, it's a very large bowl of grated zucchini. So I'm just going to put these in portion size Ziploc bags and throw them straight into the freezer. I am going to chop up what I have remaining here, which is a substantially smaller pile than the other pile that I just grated over here. I'm gonna chop these up into small pieces and fry these up to go with dinner tonight. And lastly, over here, I need to clean up my mess and then I'll deal with the parsley. Parsley is pretty easy. You just rip off the leaves like so, make sure it's clean and then dehydrate it. Once these are dehydrated, I'll run them through my blender just to chop them up a little bit more finely. 
and put them into a jar and then use them all winter long. And if you do want a fresher taste, then definitely do chop and freeze them. I just am lacking in freezer space, so I try to dehydrate and can things when necessary because I have a pantry that can accommodate that food. All right, so this is the dehydrator I have and there's a couple of features that I like. So this is the Excalibur and I love that it has glass doors and I love that it has a timer. My other older nine drawer Excalibur doesn't have a timer on it and I am constantly forgetting things in it. So this actually has an alarm that goes off. However, I am definitely more of a manual than a digital girl. And so the manual um, or the digital part of it is not my favorite thing. The other thing that's great about this is it does have two different zones. So you can put a solid drawer in and have a different temperature and a different time for each section, which is pretty handy. But because I do such large batches all the time, I almost never use that. So I can set my time here. We're gonna do these ones for 24 hours. And if you want your food to maintain all of its enzymes and nutrients and all that kind of stuff, you wanna dehydrate it at 85, that will keep it um, like a live food. I'm not as concerned about that right now when it comes to this parsley. So I'm gonna crank this up to 95 and set it for both zones A and B. And there we go. Do you want to show everybody the trick for getting the air out of that? <laughs> and then pull your, yeah, there you go. Perfect. Well done. That looks awesome. Okay, next up, so we have all of those tomatoes chopped and cored, and they are going to sit and cook down here probably until tomorrow. Normally what I would do is put this in a roaster oven and set it on low, but my roaster oven that I got several years ago, it was actually a gift from Rachel from that 1870s homestead, has met its end, and I did order a new one, and it is going to be in tomorrow. So I'm going to do it on the stovetop instead until that comes in. Over here, I have my steamer. This is my very favorite steamer. I just bought this at the recommendation of one of my friends over on Instagram. Her name is Crystal and she has an amazing account called the Whole Fed Homestead over there. If you are on Instagram, I will link her down below. She is absolutely amazing. So anyway, she recommended this to me and this is called, the brand name is All Clad and I will link this steamer down in the description box below. Anything that I use in my videos, I will link down there in case you are interested in checking them out yourself. But this is a fantastic steamer. It's not inexpensive, but it is one of those things that's going to last you forever. So I am going to steam all of the beans here. There's these ones and then a few more over there that I'm going to steam. I'm going to steam them for three minutes and then dunk them in some cold water, let them dry a little bit, and then I will put those into the freezer. If you don't blanch your beans, they will be very, very tough when they come out of the freezer and not taste very good. So definitely blanch your beans. I always wait until my steamer actually starts steaming before I put my vegetables in. In this case, I don't worry about that if I'm just steaming vegetables to eat, but if I'm doing it to blanch, I want them to go in when it's nice and hot and then I'll set my timer and pull them off. I just wanted to offer one more tip when it comes to doing your zucchini is because there's so much water in it. If you put it in a colander and leave it for a couple of hours while you do other work around your kitchen and then come back to it, there is a ton of water that extracts from it. And then before you put it in your bags, give it a little bit of a squeeze and that will remove even more of the water. These were the purple beans. See how they're all green and I'm pouring water all over my floor. One second. So now I am just cooling them off. My tap water is spring water and it's very cold. So I'm just running that over those hot beans and then I will bag them up just like I did with the yellow ones.
We set a stopwatch and it took 60 minutes total for all the prep for all this and then it's maybe taken me an extra half an hour to steam and package all these veggies. So these are the purple beans here and then we have, so we have two of those. We have six of the yellow beans and then we have 13 of the uh, grated zucchini and then four of the red peppers. And then with the extra zucchini over here, I am frying up a whole bunch of this for dinner. And then the tomatoes have, are just cooking down. And like I said, this will be happening probably for the next 24 hours until it gets nice and thick. And then I'll add some other veggies to it and puree it up and get that all canned up. I just realized after feeling so accomplished of, for getting all of this stuff done in such a short period of time that I have not done the pickling cucumbers. So I am going to be doing that as well. All I'm going to do with those is chop them up and put a little bit of salt with them, stick them in a pot and put those in the fridge overnight to extract all the extra water for them. And then I will make pickles with those tomorrow. So that might be a video that I'll do for you guys. I might do my sweet bread and butter pickle a recipe. If you're interested in that, let me know in the comment section below and I will do that for you. That is it for me today. I hope you guys all have a fantastic day and I'll see you again in the next video. Bye.